is Road to Close with your host, Brian Tessier. Welcome to episode number one. I have an amazing show for you today. So the first thing I want to talk about, I had a meeting the other day. CRM salesperson says to me, Brian, I have a product that's going to cut your workload in half. I was like, shit, I'll take two. <laughs> so did you hear about the last remaining condo unit in the building? It was last, but it certainly was not least. <laughs> a realtor's prayer. Dear Lord, please prove to me that making money won't make me happier by tripling my GCI. <laughs> what do affordable contractors and UFOs have in common? You hear rumors about them all the time, but no one you know has ever seen one. Before you start sending me nasty messages, reliable contractors, feel free to DM me, email me, call me. I have a long list of people that are waiting to hear from you. UFOs, please leave me alone. <laughs> what does a house wear? A dress. So if you have any jokes that are better than those, memes, etc., please DM me, call me, email me, text me. I don't care. Without further ado, let's get into the show. <laughs> we have a great show for you today, and I have two amazing guests, Anna DeFrank, Dana DeMarino. Come on out. Hello. 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 <laughs> so tell me a little about who you are and where you're licensed. So my name is Anna DeFrank. I'm a real estate broker in Pennsylvania. I'm licensed also in Florida and California. I do investing myself, property flipping. I'm involved on all sides. Awesome. Boss lady. Dana? I am Dana DeMarino. I am a licensed realtor here in Pennsylvania as well. I'm also licensed in California, soon to be Florida. And Wisconsin, <laughs> Mexico, <laughs> yeah. Alabama. Right, right, yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, I also own three Decalash uh, studio franchises in Ohio, and that's about it. <laughs> As if that's not enough. I mean, clearly we have two boss ladies on set, which I'm excited about. So the topic for today we're going to talk about is the cooling market. We're all seeing it. I'm getting uh, emails from my colleagues in Pittsburgh. I'm seeing on Facebook, new price, price adjusted, et cetera. Tell me what you are seeing in your markets. So when you say market cooling, do you, do you think it's more just stabilizing than cooling? That's a fantastic piece of terminology. I just learned something today. I think I should be telling my buyers and sellers stabilizing because, yeah. you know, in Pittsburgh, it was, uh, it's always okay. And then it got hot and then it got ultra hot. And I think it came from ultra hot back down to hot so it's kind of working its way in stabilizing and, and the hell with all those naysayers saying talking about foreclosures are going to run ramp and everybody's going to lose equity yeah everyone thinks we're going to fall off a cliff in right. like a couple months everybody there hears one thing and then they kind of start to go crazy contact your realtor in mexico <laughs> wisconsin california Alaska. wherever we'll set you straight yeah. <laughs> so what are you ladies seeing in your market or your everyday business um, with everyday business, everything is not as chaotic as it was a few months ago. Like when you talked about the ultra hot market, that definitely existed. I saw places sell for, you know, 20,000 over, 40,000 over. I've heard crazy people offering, you know, 70,000 over. I'm not seeing that as much. I think there's way more options that have come to the market. So it kind of evens out the playing field. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, changing it from cooling to stabilizing really hits the nail on the head because we're not sitting home doing nothing all day. Like, yeah. We weren't running around pulling our hair out Sunday through Sunday on this ultra hot market. And now all of a sudden, we you know, we're taking off to Florida and just vacationing. Our phones are still blowing up. I can tell you for a fact, I came out of the, uh, the uh, stage here and I come and look and they're both on their phones doing business. So the market has not tanked. No. It's not going to tank. So um, for your sellers, and your buyers, tell me how are you how are you prepping them for the stabilization? So if you go to a listing appointment or if you have listings that were listed during the ultra hot market and now they're kind of sitting around, how are you prepping them? What, what's your advice to sellers out there? Well, it really, the key point is all about preparation. You know, get in front of any potential issues before a buyer or a home inspector brings it to light. You know, because buyers, they depending on what side I'm representing, can we tend to be pretty dramatic. Sure. You know, and everything is a huge deal when in reality it's really not. Right. So if the sellers know of something, that's when I come over, I consult. Okay, paint this. You know, put this hand railing up. Um, fix this. Anna, should I put a roof on my garage? Yes. Like things like that. It's it's prep staging, preparation, photos. All of it influences the exposure and how people are going to be attracted to your home. I couldn't agree more. And ever I would go into listing appointments during the ultra hot, they would ask me, you know, what do I need to do? And I would just tell them, listen, before it got on fire, I would have a honey-do list for you of at least five to 10 things. Right now, you guys are getting away with murder. Sellers, you're yeah. getting away with murder. You can put houses out there on the market with baseboard that's hanging off of it. 
And to your point, I'm going in and telling them, now we gotta go back to basics. Yeah. You've gotta caulk that baseboard. You've gotta put a fresh coat of paint on. You've gotta put mulch down. All those little things you kind of ignored, you've gotta do that again. Yeah. Yeah. And because you know, for so long, sellers were told that the market was ultra hot. Right. And so buyers were also told the same thing. So right. it kind of steered them away from wanting to necessarily look to buy. But it's, you know, it's stabilizing. It now. is definitely so stabilized. It scared people. It has scared people. I think buyers had COVID fatigue. I mean, I had agent buyer COVID fatigue as well. I mean, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. I was talking the other day about to somebody and you know, our job is to get excited about writing an offer. But as a buyer's agent, I know your buyer's agents can, can relate to this. We write so many offers that we are failing on. Sometimes a buyer would say to me, oh, I want to write an offer. And I was like, Ugh. right. It was painful because it's, you knew like the chances of it getting accepted. Happen. It was like <laughs> zero. It is. It's a battle. Yeah. And you, yeah. you had mentioned something off stage and that is we have to work for our money. So let's give, let's go through some buyer scenarios. What do you, what are you telling your buyers in this stabilized market? Or what will you tell your buyers in a stabilized market? What kind of advice? Um, it's, it's basically get to the point, you know, know exactly what you want. Don't be confused about anything as far as like in terms of money, how much can you afford? You know, what kind of payment is this looking like? What's your situation? When can we move? Things like that. Yeah. Be ultra prepared so you can make a move or pull a trigger if you find something you really like. Right. Dana, if you were going to buy something right now and you, with the knowledge you have as an agent, what, would, what kind of advice would you give to yourself? Same thing, pretty much. You know, you need to go into this being ready because there's so many other players in the game. Right. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you know, you need to go in there extremely prepared, knowing what you want. You know, you have your ducks in a line. And that's that's really the advice I would say, too, because at that point, it's, you know, don't go in there being nervous and, and hesitant because you're wasting time when somebody else is more prepared than you. Preparation is everything in any market. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, a little piece of seller advice that I've been giving, I just went on a listing appointment last night so it's fresh in my head is, um, I tell the sellers, I'm gonna pull sold comps to try to figure out the range, not the number, the range your home is going to, should go on the market at and is ultimately gonna sell at. And I tell them, I'm gonna pull comps in the last 180 days, six months, which is what we have to do. Um, and that's gonna be in that ultra hot market. So you're gonna see these numbers that are like, you know, a million, but your house might be worth 920. So when we decide to go to market, we have to intelligently pick a number that we really don't have any facts yet because the stats just aren't in. Right. I mean, it won't be till December yeah where we're going to see a result of the stabilized market. Yeah, because right. when people made offers, it was more so to win a competition. 100%. It wasn't to, you know, pay for An a actual, value. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, a real yes. estate value. It was more like, I need to beat out 10 people, right. so I'm going to inflate my buyer price. Right. Knock and, out my appraisal contingency. And then they didn't want to do that because they thought, well, whenever the market does stabilize, I'm going to have bought this house for... Mm -hmm. It's a conversation I have with my buyers. They say to me in that ultra hot market, they say, Brian, are we overpaying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, and, and it's I, a reality. A split section, section, split second in my mind, I said, do I tell them what they want to hear or do I be it's honest? Kind of brutal honest. You have to. And, and I would tell because everyone. Because it's your fault if you don't. Absolutely. Yeah. I say, listen, if you are lucky enough to get the house, yeah. you have overpaid. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. So, advice I give to my buyers now is listen, the, we are seeing these houses that are were listed during the ultra hot market at X price, which is now in this stabilized market too high. We can't be afraid to go in and put an offer in. Yeah. Two buyers I have talked to, one at Cars and Coffee and one somewhere else. They said to me, "Oh, we like one two anywhere, one two three anywhere street, but it's just a little too high." I'm like, "That's the best time." Yeah. yeah. They have not adjusted yep. to the market value. And it's not their fault because the stats, the data is just not in to uh, understand what your home is worth now. By my buyer, hey, listen, Mr. Buyer, Mrs. Buyer, you were setting that market value let's just write an offer it cost you zero money yep. cost me zero <clears throat> money cost the listing agent zero money and i will be at dollars to donuts that listing agent is just hoping they get an offer from us and yeah. it will work on our side to get that offer accepted mm -hmm. cool awesome stuff um buyers and sellers hopefully you got some good value out of that next up we have an awesome game for you ladies it's called would you <laughs> rather i'm going to give you two real estate scenarios and you're going to to pick which one you would choose from. Okay, you ready? Yes. <laughs> First scenario, would you rather get up really hungover and really early to show a luxury property on a Saturday morning or would you rather be prepped up, prim, proper, ready to go Saturday night, you meet your girlfriends, boyfriends, whoever, 8 p.m. that call comes in from that buyer that you've been showing houses to for a year and says, the one house I want has just come on the market. I know it's an hour away and it's Friday night at 8 p.m. 
would you rather? Which would you rather? Well, Easy. I've experienced with both. <laughs> <laughs> so you drink a lot. I used to. <laughs> <laughs> no, on Friday, 8 p.m. Let me get that out of the way. By the time I meet up with everybody anyway, like they'll be, you know, warmed up and good to go. So how do you consult your friends? How do you say to them? Like, hey, like, I mean, they understand. If you're my friend, then you understand that I work 24-7. Right, so I'm like, hey, I have to go do this really quick. And they're, they're already hung up. They're like, fine, yeah, I'll see you later. Hopefully your friends are realtors that you're going to meet. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably not Hello. there either. <laughs> <laughs> We're all late. Dana, what would you rather? Uh, easy for me. Saturday, hungover. What? I work well under pressure. And I, I can get up and I can go. But whenever I come home, I will crash, crash. for the rest of the day. <laughs> so let me ask you this. How many alarms were you set Saturday morning? Oh, God. Oh, if you saw my phone right now. <laughs> she sets like 19 alarms just for a normal day. Just a normal day. <laughs> Last question on this point is, if they want to write offers Friday night, Saturday yeah. morning, as I said in the monologue, do you roll your eyes and you're like, oh my God, I got to write an offer? Do you find an excuse to write it tomorrow I, or I later? I it on the bar. I do it in, do I bring my bar? laptop. I would do it then. You do it right on the spot. Yeah. Love it. Because it'll give me anxiety if I don't. I feel guilty. Right. Yeah. How do you enjoy your night or your yeah. hangover if you know you have an offer looming? Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, this sounds crazy, but I'm at the point in my life where I'd rather do that than go out anyway. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So. We call that maturity. We yeah. love in there. It happens. I mean, I'm like later. teetering on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So would you rather number two? So would you rather have a $250,000 listing seller say, let me sign the listing paperwork. Here it is, don't bother me until you get an offer. Or would you ha rather have a million dollar luxury seller sign a listing contract before they, they read over the whole listing contract, ask you a bunch of questions, and then they say, I wanna know what your strategy is, what's your marketing strategy? Uh, okay, wait, we got an offer in. You know, Before I see the offer, tell me about it verbally so I don't have to look at it, and tell me how you're gonna negotiate that. And the showings at 8.01, the first uh, 8 o'clock, they're blowing you up at 8.01 asking you what the feedback was. So would you rather $250,000 on a small one not bothering you or a million dollar million one dollar. all over Million you? dollar all day. We'll work for our that? money. How would you handle that? Oh, that's a great point. We'll work for our money. People say we get paid too much. We are ready to work for our money. We will work for I our money. I was going to go to the $250,000 one job. until she said that. Now I want to work for my money. Yeah. I'm switching my choice. Yeah. Million dollar one. I mean, I do it now for things that are listed for like 60 grand. So, <laughs> so, so, so tell me, how do you handle um, a client that is interwoven into the whole process. I, I mean, I just pacify them. You know, okay. it's it's like I, it's kind of like a therapy session for them, obviously. They have some sort of anxiety, so we're gonna have to talk about this, talk it through, and then I kind of just am at their mercy until they feel better. Yeah. 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 Same thing, you kind of have to understand why they are the way that they are, right. and then just kind of adjust accordingly, understand the position they're in. And I mean, ultimately, that's your job, that's what you're there for, and so, you kind of just have to take the punches sometimes and oh, yeah. and go with it. And it's it's why you're getting paid. I kind of like show no emotion. I'm just our, like, mm -hmm. That's great. You're, we're, our job description has no job description. Right, yeah. We're counselors. I mean, the way I handle it is I, I do exactly what you're saying. I appease them. I try to make them comfortable. And then I take it out on my parents. <laughs> I my parents we take, I take it out on the people closest yeah, to us. Right. I call them I like, do. Can you this yeah. I'm like, he's crazy. All right, next, would you rather? Would you rather have a deal? And we all were going through this. Under a praise, would you rather have that buyer that took you out on a Friday night to put that offer in finance furniture the week before closing and destroy the deal? Um, I would have it, I would rather have it under a praise because, I mean, the deal's gonna be kind of squashed anyway, yeah. either scenario, okay. but at least if it under appraises, if someone's really desperate and motivated, still... you can compromise <laughs> yeah. like the margin on what, you, you have some know. negotiation still. Yeah, we don't know how far under appraised it went. Right. So. Dana, agree. same way, under appraised? Yeah. I agree, under appraised. We've gotten deals t together before that under appraised, sometimes the seller comes down and in uh, list price, sometimes yeah. the buyer brings some money, sometimes both happen, but when they finance, or, or oh, we're handcuffed. Not, if they find yeah. something before, we're they just, just dead in the water. They just killed it. Yeah, unless they have cash. <laughs> yeah. So, um, another would you rather. Would you rather show vacant houses in 90 degree heat, dressed, made up, etc., with no air conditioning? You know, you're showing 10 houses. You don't know what it is until you get there. Or would you rather show it in 20 degree weather with ice and snow leading up to the house? Again, we're dressed to the nines, hot or cold? Hot. Why? I'm a hot person. Okay. Lived in California for seven years. I... I run away from cold weather. I love it. <laughs> this is hard it because is hard. I've done both. 
And I think being sweaty and showing houses is way more uncomfortable than if I could just wear mm. gloves right. in, this, in the, like, the foreclosure houses. Right. I think cold. I'm going to go with cold. I would go with cold, too, because there's nothing more disgusting than a sweaty man. Um, <laughs> you know, your, your, odorant, your deodorant burns off after an hour. So if you think it's lasting for 10 showings, that ain't happening. I, uh, I mean, full disclosure, when I go out showing $20,000 houses, I, I take a Kleenex in my pocket because... I mean, my oh. nose is running. It's yeah. And I yeah. try to point out. I'm like, look over there. Look <laughs> that's over where the there. masks come in. You that's true. Like, yeah. There was a blessing for the mask. That's there for was. Sure. There was that little silver lining. It keeps you warm yeah. and like no one can see you. You have to brush your teeth. You have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, you're just there. I don't know about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sunglasses, mask. <laughs> All right, last one. This is my favorite one. Would you rather show in ten houses? Your buyer makes a number two in the house. You're okay with that. You're a flipper, right? You know what to do. You go to the toilet, you turn the water, and they tell you, they come out and tell you, oh my God, I, you know, I had to go to the bathroom, I was sick, I went number two in the toilet. Oh, no worries, you know, our job description doesn't have a description. You go and turn the water on next to the toilet, <laughs> nothing. Oh. I'm a flipper, I know what to do. You go into the main water and out of the basement, you're nervous, you turn it on, <laughs> no water. Oh, that's not Now good. what do you do? You just have to leave it there, or would you rather you've got ten houses? They're on. They're flying out at the end of the tenth house. You've got a book super tight. You've drank an extra large thing of uh, coffee, and you've got to go to the bathroom really bad. What would you rather do, and why? Uh, I've have I have experience in both. <laughs> you got to tell me about these. <laughs> well, um, this actually just happened in a house I was showing. It was around a six hundred thousand dollar house, and. It was just a walkthrough, and for some reason, the one toilet that had a valve off, um, they decided to use it, and we, we couldn't, we were SOL. Um, so <laughs> that, that was a scenario. I would rather have that scenario than me trying to right. strategize where I'm gonna, you know, let it go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would say probably, yeah, the- The buyer. Yeah, the buyer. Yeah. Selfish, but- yeah. Yeah, I'll figure it but out they either don't, way. Like the seller and the seller you agent the, you know, knows me. The they don't know the buyer. True, but you have so. to call the listing agent and tell them, listen, we left you a gift in the uh, house. It's not I an did, offer. It's, it's, I did call her. She was it's like, it's an it's, offer, it's, bud. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, this is my problem now. I'm like, I'm yeah, sorry. This is, right. this is part of the. We're humans. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I, so my choice is, I'd rather be the one that's in control. So I'd rather have the problem where I have to go to the bathroom, show in ten houses. I've ex I've had experience with both. So what I do is whether it's number one or number two, I've had both back in my drinking days as a realtor 15 years ago. <laughs> I send the buyers upstairs. Why do I send the buyers upstairs? I fly downstairs in the basement. Chances are there's a Pittsburgh potty. For those of you who don't know, we'll talk about that some other day. <laughs> I hit that Pittsburgh potty, whether it's number one or number two, with lightning <laughs> speed. And then I flush the toilet. I make sure the water runs you on wipes, the faucet right? first. You wipe, Oh, my Sometimes God. Sometimes uh, that, that may be house number two I have to go back right? and wipe. Um, so I go down to the basement because they're upstairs. They don't hear a thing. If I go upstairs and send them downstairs and I flush the toilet, they can hear everything rolling down through the pipes. And oh, my that. God. Smart strategic. So that... either, either way. <laughs> That's wild because those Pittsburgh potties have no in enclosure. No. It's, it's just... a gamble. It's Listen, a gamble. When I hit the bottom of the steps, I, I hear them upstairs. My pants are around my ankles. I'm going by the time I hit the toilet. Ryan, why are your and pants I'm unbuttoned? I'm done. <laughs> like, Come out of the car, it. my belt's on. What are you doing? Go upstairs. Amazing master bathroom I'm upstairs. All right, everybody, that was our show. Thanks, Anna and Dana. We really appreciate it. If Thank you have you. any questions or topics you would like us to cover, feel free to DM, call, uh, reach out to these guys, buyers and sellers in Pittsburgh, Miami, California, Wisconsin, <laughs> Mexico. If you need a buyer or seller representation, make sure you contact one of us. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys.